<laughs> so today I'm going to talk about my job, which is basically Google advertising. Um, just a quick word who, who and what I am. I'm studying with one of you. Who and what I am. Uh, I'm originally from Germany. Um, I ended up um, coming over here after um, I worked as a, a modeling or secretary and came to do my university degree. And somehow got stuck here. I'm not quite happy with that. Great, my computer starts itself. Restarts itself. That is what you want. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, so I came over here, I went to university, and I ended up working in um, PPC, so which is paper like marketing. I'm just trying to talk about this and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> and so, um,
been there. So if you're, when you search for something, I'm sure you have noticed that you have uh, just the normal um, results you search for. And sometimes you have on top of here these, when it says uh, sponsored and direct. It, this is actually PPC. Um, for this, Google says it, I mean, you can never pay um, a higher independent ranking. At least you cannot pay Google. You can pay agencies to do SEO for you. Um, but these are supposed to give um, businesses the chance to get themselves out of the page, get themselves seen and clicked on, um, and they pay for that. But how does the whole thing work? How do they get there? Um, the process of what happens every time you do the search. You put the keyword in, then Edward matches your keywords and keywords that the company has defined. They want to match to an auction takes place. The highest bidders win. The first ten, the highest ten bidders are shown on the first page. Also, although it's a bit more complicated, it's not only the thing that gets into that. And then the user clicks, and only that uh, that um, campaign that had the winning ad is uh, basically the ad with the clicks paid. Which has clearly kind of uh, one advantage to the advertisers. If you do print advertising, you just throw money out there. I hope somebody sees us. No idea what happens. And um, here, you only pay when it's clicked, which is absolutely kind of the right way to go with a small company um, because you can't always afford advertising. But how do you find these keywords? Um, Google offers a keyword tool. So um, I'm assuming I'm Mela and I want to promote our um, Omniverse. And so first I go and watch the work and I put the keyword in the, uh, the keyword tool. And it basically multiplies it for me and gives me suggestions what other keywords people could be looking for. On top of that, it gives me here um, uh, local monthly searches because I have to find, I want to do it in the United Kingdom and for people who use it and speak English, which is defined by a um, language browser. And um, this way I can just kind of find a lot of keywords that he was looking for. Um, but it is a bit more complicated than that. Because um, if you put in a uh, WordPress course and you have only that word, you only capture these people, put these exact words in, that will be different match types in there. Except is the simplest one. It gets only matched if somebody types in the exact word thing. And they're sprayed. If I, for example, have the keyword in my account, WordPress course, WordPress course, somebody types in WordPress Manchester, but except it doesn't show. But the phrase it shows. So basically, what you search for, except, plus something in the front, plus something in the back. And then there was broad, which then match you to anything that it thinks is remotely similar. It's quite dangerous because remotely similar is actually remotely. It, it's just it's sometimes all over the place. That's why they introduced Prop Match Modified. It means you put a plus in front of the word that is important to you, and this word gets particularly close to the rest. By the way, I'm trying to make a lot of sound like an Edward for Google advertising. Uh, it, um, it has its, uh, its advantages and it also has its but mainly I'll be talking on the advantage just because that's what I'm working. So, but there are also negative men types because um, a lot of, we have a phrase in the broad, you get tired, you get matched to a lot of, lot of, lot of big cool keywords. And a lot of them, you don't really want to, you don't want to know to what you get matched if you have a massage or some things you really don't want to be associated with. And so, um, a massage salon, you could yeah, exclude certain keywords. Mostly, you would exclude things like jobs, or if you maybe a uh, luxury, uh, luxury brand would be pretty cheap. And, um, that that on the bottom here was for a labeling company who got matched to uh, some sort of a dating thing. So um, it it is important to kind of look at that. And one one thing is you can also. Here, it will, that's why this is quite cool, because when you put the keyword in it, it gives you a Google thing that's it's similar. And if you then have here something you really don't want to be matched to, take that as a negative keyword. <coughs> so, 
Um, um, a keyword headlines lab, don't use one word keyword, I have one example for an industrial lubricant company. Um, not the way you want to talk. <laughs> they had a keyword trim, which is apparently an industri industrial lubricant, but the word trim got got to <laughs> all sorts of things, from hedge trimming or whatever. It's, it's a, they basically spent 80% of their budget on the keyword trim, in which none of the keywords had anything to do with them. So uh, don't give one word keywords. Uh, long tail keywords are cheaper, the less competition there is, it's an auction. So the less people are using it, the cheaper the keyword is going to be. Um, locations are quite good. You know, when you're hunting in an area, put all the images in, you put chalk in, you put all sorts of uh, areas in. Um, probably what people actually want to do, I'm selling something, but buy, I'm selling something online, online it. Um, the more descriptive people are, the more, the whole principle of Google is relevancy. They are trying at least only to show you and the thing they're relevant to you, but they're helping you. We call them if they're helping themselves because they get a lot of money out of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's the principle of relevancy, and relevancy gets rewarded, I guess, that matter. Um, 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 it's best to use keywords that have about a thousand plus monthly searches because the number still going to see Um Yeah, and not forget your negatives. I'll keep repeating that. Um, so, but you don't just throw keywords in a big pool and then have random hands eventually. There is quite a bit of structure to it. So you have the overarching campaign, which then is an ad group. What sounds like if I turn back to 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 and I'm um, um, want to advertise the university. I would make an ad group for WordPress courses, I would make an ad group for Arduino courses, I would make an ad group for Magnifying, and then have closely related ads to that, where I uh, also put the keywords, if possible, in the end. The more things that make you do, the cheaper the advertising is. It can get quite complicated. Uh, basically, this is uh, how a campaign would look that has about um, three different ad groups, but large accounts can have hundreds and hundreds of ad groups. <coughs> and coming back to the MATLAB example, so maybe the Pokemon company, MATLAB, and here, which is the different uh, uh, ad groups, which are linked to positive and negative keywords and to the end. Um, um, an ad consists of a headline, which may be 25 letters. And, um, what do you have searched for in Highlight in Dark Blue? Uh, there is one big thing, I don't know if you've noticed that when you search for something, that there is a lot highlighted in Dark Blue, the whole headline. This is so, so called dynamic keyword insertion. But with this, is it perfect with gradients? <laughs> you have to be really careful. Because it puts in there whatever the searcher puts in. So, for example, here, children's sale. Children wholesale, or over here, where somebody tried to put the keyword set, which is this here in, but misspelled it, and that looks really embarrassing. <laughs> so, um, on also DKI usually gets your quality score, which is quite important for the for the bidding, because um, in the beginning I showed you the, the top three, and then on the side for the seven for the top ten, and they're numbered and then they're every. And the bidding works like that. They take your max of your bid, which is called maximum cost per click, and which is then um, uh, weighed out with your quality score. And um, basically, it multiplies quality score, which can be anything from 1 to 10 with your bid, and the person who's then the highest value is the person on the top. The quality score is quite interesting with Google, because they also have a mystery component which they don't tell anybody whatever that is, they now started to call it other relevancy factors because some people thought probably mystery component sounds a bit silly. Um, that the quality score is determined by a lot of things. So there is the ad relevancy, that's what I said. The ad has to be quite close to the end to, um, to the keywords. The keywords have to be relevant to the landing page. The landing page is really important. A lot of websites make it really silly and you can just come to the main page, which is not what you use, it's what you call that's not what Google tries to reward. If you put WordPress calls in there, you should have a very possible website. Um, the historical performance of the 
for car body shop. So somebody goes to look for murdered girl body parts, then this headline was inserted into a surgery for whatever body, car body shop or something, and then it was just on it. <laughs> we were all a bit like, should we notify somebody? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, that relatively take more like from a, a building um, aspect from being a business than from the user. I'm not sure about this. I hope that's what you're looking for. If you are interested in that, then maybe have your own business. There are quite a few resources and websites. Um, um, building the whole thing is relatively simple. I had that all prepared. You can, if you have a Google account, you can easily uh, um, track that just with your own password. Uh, this is how the campaigns basically look. Um, it gives you kind of, if it had been running, I've just uh, made a daily campaign. If it had been running, it would show you here a graph of how many impressions, how many clicks you had, um, all the statistics here. You can go really, really deep into it, like from which locations the clicks came, um, and uh, what time of day, and um, this is kind of budget, also the single place can change, change your bidding. Um, so, um, and all, all starts from very low budget. You can basically run your campaign with budget monthly budget of five, five pounds if you want. You might only have two clicks, depending on what it is, depends on how you price on um, what business you're in. Basically, if you click on an ad of the solicitor, it will pass the solicitor approximately five pounds. Because solicitors and uh, accountants are the most expensive clicks. I've seen clicks go for 20 pounds. Usually, in most, in most industries, clicks are about 15p to about one pound to two pounds. But solicitors, Especially uh, uh, payment protection um, thingy and uh, um, what's the word? Injury claims. They are the most expensive. So could we keep clicking those and get them out of business? If you click them too much, no, you couldn't get them out of business because they're mostly budget and the daily budget. So as soon as the daily budget is used up, they won't show anymore. But you could make sure nobody else sees them. But you have to be careful because they don't do that. If you do that all the time with the same IP, they can notice them. I mean, Google will notice that you're doing that, and then the keyboard is, Google will exclude you. That's not how we see those adverts anymore. Do you get them? They do professional malicious clicking. Uh, there are robot there are <laughs> Basically, there are robot type, you know. bots out there doing that. Um, I don't think somebody does professional and malicious clicking. Um, I had a case uh, on Friday, actually, just before going home, where a customer had a new campaign started. It was phoning us up that he was now getting uh, getting spam through his quote uh, quote box, but um, it can really have anything to do with us. The only thing you can imagine is that one of his competitors looked for something, saw that he had the ad, uh, started clicking on him like crazy, and then filling out his quote form. Yeah. Um, another great thing, which isn't on here, is the conversion tracking. So you can put a tag on the website, which is your conversion screen, your thank you for your query, or thanks for buying, or, or something. So that will then um, be registered in AdWords as a conversion. So you can see how much you're, basically how much you spend in clicks for you know, ma making money out of that. Um, we have one customer um, who has a Bulgarian web developer who was intelligent enough to put the conversion tracking up an ad for a single page. <laughs> Which isn't really what conversion tracking is supposed to be. Um, I'm, I suppose that Garland mixed up uh, the analytics code and the conversion code. But still, so, I mean, people have real expectations. And, and as we as search queries are, as we have other requests from customers, how many have we have our websites? There are, we, we deal with um, 3,000 websites at the moment, and there are particularly crazy and like that. And what people want to advertise is also the I mean, we have one guy who has dodgy MP3 files. I'm not going into the details of what he's talking about in the background, but you shouldn't talk about it when you have present in the room. <laughs> but that's quite interesting because Google doesn't allow you advertising things. There are things that Google doesn't allow, so you can't allow uh, secret paternity tests. Uh, 
cannot advertise guns. We cannot advertise uh, pharmacy, online pharmacy, without the certain that we have to get uh, approved to, to advertise online pharmacy. And if you cannot uh, well, you drugs, and you cannot uh, uh, do uh, above 18 stuff, basically. You have to be very careful with what we're using, because we do have complaints for adult shops, um, but you have to be very careful with your wording, otherwise the complaint will get just Any last questions for this before we go? Yeah, so sometimes when I do a little Google search, you know, sometimes you say, look, in the normal searches, I get Amazon trying to sell the book, and yet in the response bar, I also get Amazon telling me that they'll sell me that book. Is there any logic either on Google's behalf or on the your behalf as a company to try and stop appearing in the ads when you actually appear in that and you'll get results anyway? I don't think there is. For two reasons. If Google pays, then we will stop making money out of the clicks. Yeah. Uh, if, and the other thing is, um, it's usually from big companies in best practice to have to appear there as well. There's no also for your brand term. Because the reason for that is if you don't, the ads are above the organic search. So a lot of people just click on the ad and then you will use the track. Okay, we And the only use any of the little company information as well. So if they've got any sort of segmentation in place, like they if you have a look at certain cookie in place. With this one, we want to find the second patient. I think, I mean, I personally don't work with an IT because our customers are too small. I, I think, as far as I know, you can go very far to detail, but that is onto kind of how long ago you have been on the website and where on the website you have been. Um, on, on Facebook, something you had started, uh, where if a company has your, has your email address, they can basically uh, cross-check that with an email address. You are registered with Facebook and then do advertise and show you the ads on the plant. So yeah, if you kind of have an account with, I don't know, Simply D or whatever. That's a good Yeah, that's a good So if you have an account with them and are logged in with your email address there, then they will, I don't know if they do, just the user group doesn't sound to then they cross check that with Facebook and if you log to them the same thing, then they will show you that because they know you are a customer. Yeah, so I actually work for them um, <laughs> and we're uh, looking at doing just like we have things that we can have. It's a very new contact with our company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another one, if that's 